it took the leaders of 27 EU member states just 38 minutes to approve British Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit proposal. But convincing her own parliament is far from a done deal. The more you examine this deal, the more it becomes clear that this House cannot vote to support it. There are 650 lawmakers in Britain's House of Commons and May needs a simple majority of them to vote for her deal. But the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the Scottish National Party oppose May's plan and at least 50 legislators from the ruling coalition have refused to support her. Some of them favour a hard Brexit that would pull the UK out of the single market and get rid of EU rules for the movement of goods, services and people. Others want to go back to the public for a second Brexit referendum. But the government insists so, uh, neither Mr. of Speaker, these are viable Mr. options. Mr Speaker, I have observed this process at close quarters for two and a half years and I'm absolutely clear about one thing. This deal is the best deal to exit the EU that is available or that is going to be available. The idea that there is an option of renegotiating at the 11th hour is simply a delusion. If there's not enough support for this deal, the opposition could try to boot May from office with a no-confidence vote. Alternatively, the Prime Minister could also call for elections, but the country is scheduled to leave the EU on March the 29th and the political tug of war will only add to the uncertainty over the terms of this divorce. Mubi Nasser, TRT World. Professor Patrick Minford was an economic advisor to the former UK Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and is a Brexit supporter. Um, Patrick, good to see you. The leader of the Tory backbenchers has told the Prime Minister to go back to Brussels for further talks rather than see her Brexit plan defeated heavily in the House of Commons next week. How do you read this? Uh, what do you think is going to happen next week? Well, it's clear that this deal can't get through Parliament. It's a dreadful deal from the point of view of the UK, and the EU, EU must have known that when it suggested it. The worst bit, of course, is the so-called backstop, which me means that unless we can find agreement with the EU over the next two years on a free trade agreement, we will be tied into the EU Customs Union, and Northern Ireland will be even more tightly tied into the EU to such an extent that it won't be part of the UK effectively. It'll take its orders directly from Brussels. And this, of course, is completely unacceptable. And so, in fact, the best hope for, for Mrs May is to go back to Brussels and say, this backstop protocol has to be revised. And instead of it, we can simply say, as everybody knows is the truth, that neither the EU nor we would, would put a hard border in Ireland because it's completely unnecessary. And uh, we would neither of us do it. So therefore, the, the backstop could simply take the form of, well, no one will have a hard border. If we can't agree on anything else, then we won't have a hard border anyway. Let's just say if Prime Minister Theresa May's plan is rejected and perhaps she's forced to resign, it is not obvious, really, that any new leader of the Conservative Party or indeed any... Labour-led government would manage to resolve this political impasse either? Well, the thing is, Jamie, there is no impasse because on March the 29th, we leave the EU, and if there's no agreement, we leave without a trade agreement. We leave with agreement on presumably government-to-government -government arrangements on a whole host of detailed things that have to be dealt with by governments uh, and could easily be agreed without a formal deal, um, and that would be what would happen. We would simply leave with what's called no trade deal, and that's a very good outcome, actually. We leave the EU, and we go to, to trade under WTO rules, which is what we do with, with the whole world anyway, apart from the EU, and the EU does with the whole world. So there isn't really a problem with that at all. But that has been presented by many people in the Conservative Party as, in their words, the nightmare scenario, the edge of the cliff and so on. You don't go along with that. 
No, it's complete nonsense, Jamie, as is transparently the case. We have trade under WTO rules is an orderly process, which is makes it, in fact, impossible for the EU or ourselves to put ridiculous barriers on each other's exports that have been talked about. And it also is the case that the port of Calais will not have any truck with Mr. Macron appearing and saying no to our trade, because the port of Calais has said in no uncertain terms that it would go broke if that happened, and it's not having it. So all the ports that we deal with are very keen for trade to continue in the normal way. And of course, WTO rules say they must do that anyway to be legal. So really, all this talk is hype about something that it's a bit like the millennium bug, which everyone said was going to bring the world to an end. And of course, it, it turned out to be no problem at all. And that's what's going on here. There are lots of things that go on in trade that will continue to go on with, with no problem at all. And the WTO, contrary to a lot of hysterical uh, talk, is, is, a, is a highly orderly process and, and enforces rules on trade to prevent the sort of nonsense that people are talking about. That may be your view. The reality is in the UK, the establishment, if you want to call them that, the civil service, uh, the newspaper press, have painted a very, very different scenario. It's increasingly difficult uh, to get a, a clear narrative on the real options, isn't it? In what has been often presented as a binary choice between Prime Minister May's plans and remaining in some sort of arrangement. Yes, this is true that the establishment have been playing a very dirty game since the whole Brexit process started, trying, in effect, to reverse it. But the situation is that the laws that we passed in the UK already, the, the act of withdrawal that is implementing the whole process, mandates that on Mon March the 29th we leave, uh, agreement or no agreement, and obviously, if there's no agreement, we leave without an agreement. But of course, in practice, there will have to be an agreement on lots of detailed things. So, uh, you know, we, we will have administrative agreements on all sorts of things like how, how citizens will, will, will carry on uh, in, inside both the EU, UK citizens inside the EU and vice versa. All that will be agreed, of course, in detail, because it would be intolerable if it wasn't. And things like aviation will continue to be agreed. And so those things will be agreed anyway. But of course, on the situation on, on, on March the 29th, we will leave uh, whether there's a free trade agreement or any other sort of formal agreement on trade or not. And we would then move to WTO rules. Patrick and of Minter. course, under WTO rules, we would, we would have uh, probably a free trade agreement later. Patrick Minford in Cardiff. Thank you very much, Professor Patrick Minford.